Hey everybody, time for another movie review. Going back to the 70s, Nature Run Amok. Yeah. <laughs> one of my favorite, actually that's one of my favorite uh, subgenres, especially from the 1970s because there were so many like cheesy Nature Run Amok movies. My dad took me damn drive in to see this one. This one and that, you know what it was? It was this one and I think Battle Among the Stars. Remember the Japanese? Yeah, Sorry, yeah, yeah. I think it was a double feature at the drive-in. But I started, I was probably about, what, nine? Yeah, this and came out I, in 78, so you would have been, yeah, yeah. I started, man, I started fucking getting really upset about these piranha eating those dudes' legs off and <laughs> chewing people's hands off. When, remember, his hand was getting eaten up and the little boy was watching. I was like, what? Ah, ah. I'm like, what? <laughs> My dad says, all right, we gotta go. And I, I remember this movie being fucking terrible, like real low budget. No, it was awesome. It's actually it was pretty awesome. fucking good. Awesome. We saw the original, and then after that, we saw the... Um, the 1995 the 19 remake. remake. And I guess it was made for TV, if you look at the It actual. was, yeah. And it was almost fucking frame for frame, the same movie with a tighter edit. It was good. It was even better, in a way. Yeah, but the well, original was... The original is fucking... Yeah, because I think the original had more of, like, had comedy in it, and, like, the yeah. remake, not so much. You these know are, what I mean? These are basically Jaws ripoffs. Yeah. It's riding on the back of the Jaws fucking thing. But, um... What, what was it? George Lucas saw this, right? Or was no, it Steven Spielberg? Spielberg. Steven, Spiel, St Steven Spielberg saw this movie and liked it. Yeah, he and, said it. And actually, yeah. I want to get into that. He said yeah. this was his favorite of the Jaws robots. Yeah, it, it's good. It was a lot better than I remembered. And you can you can get it basically for free on, online. Didn't we see this on Tubi? It's on Tubi. Uh, the 1978 one, which is the one we're major, ma yeah. mainly talking about, and the 1995 remake, which I didn't even know existed. Like I said, that was made for TV. Yeah. And that's also on Tubi. There was also another, actually the first Piranha that came out in 1978, that had a sequel called Piranha mm. 2, The Spawning, yeah. Yeah. Um, which I don't, I think I saw it, but I don't really remember anything about it but in 2010 they did a remake called piranha 3d that's supposed to be it was um what's his name uh alexandra aja that french like extreme director or whatever mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be like balls to the wall insane like fucking yeah. a piranha like biting a dude's penis off and then yeah. spitting the penis back in the camera yeah. and shit like that and it's like super bloody and then i think they made a sequel to that which was called piranha 3 double d um, because there was a bunch of strippers in it. Yeah, well, <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. I'm so that go was ahead. 2010, 2011. All right, we're going to see that one. <laughs> yeah, it was but, like, you, it's yeah. like, oh, you perked my interest. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I was going to say something about it, you know, that we can add this one to the fucking encyclopedia of boobology. <laughs> it was, the, the movie is packed. It not only has a good story, it's got fucking Heather Menzies, Menzies in it, who is the girl who played Jessica from the fucking... From Logan's Run. Logan's Run t television series, who... She's kind of like the budget Farrah Fawcett, even though I like her. She's cute. She can act, but she's kind of like the budget Farrah Fawcett. And you know, she's playing opposite like a leading man who's, I don't know what that dude's name is. but Bradford he's, Dillman. Bradford Dillman. He, he's definitely the uh, the budget fucking... Um, Burt Reynolds, Burt Reynolds slash definitely. Heston. Yeah, Charlton Heston. Chester. And I've also seen like a couple of reviews called him like the brawny man as well because he's wearing that... That's he's got they, that beard and he's got that like lumberjack kind of... Yeah, that's what they did. action. That's what they did back in the seventies. The men were fucking manly, manly men with fucking beards and mustaches. And he was all cranky and gruff. Yeah, oh, don't talk to me. I'm a man. No, I'm not interested in you. That's good humor in it. It's good writing. No, nah, I'm too manly. I don't want to sleep with you. You know, you suck. As pretty as you are, he's like that. You know. Plus, he's a drunk, which I love that. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of good elements in the movie. There was a sci-fi element that I had I didn't pick up when I was a kid. Little mini dinosaurs and fucking weird shit and military experiments gone wild. Yeah. They didn't follow up on much you of it. You know what the story behind that was? Okay, yeah. so as I said, this came out in 1978. It was directed by Joe Dante, one of his very early films. Uh, obviously, he went on to do Gremlins and The Howling and Inner Space and fucking, you know, uh, all that stuff. And uh, it was produced by Roger Corman. So I think yeah. this was like his second movie. Now, what... Um, Joe Dante, because, you know, he's very well known for putting humor into his movies. The Howling had humor yeah. in it. Gremlins had humor yeah, in it. Yeah, it was good humor, good timing. Yeah. Yeah. What he wanted to do, the little monster, because a lot of people have complained about there's there's like a little stop motion monster when they first go into the lab. You know what I mean? Like yeah. where the... You're like, you know, where'd that thing go? Yeah. And it's like, and, and they only show it once. 
Well, yeah. what happened was Joe Dante wanted that to be in there, like as an homage to Ray Harryhausen, like the okay. old like monster films. And his original plan was that over the course of the movie, that monster would get bigger and bigger, and be. like in the background, yeah. and then like at the end, it was just gonna like eat up here or something yeah. like that, and then and like have nobody talk about it. But in the end, they didn't have enough budget to pull it off. So yeah. he just like left that in there because he thought it was cool. But like yeah. he couldn't do exactly what he wanted to do with it. And so he did have a plan for it. But Yeah, it just it didn't come to fruition. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of good underwater shots, good special effects. It's like it's filmed well. Uh, I guess it's been restored. It looks new. Or, you know, look, it, it looks fresh. It doesn't look new. It, yeah. it looks like something out of the 70s. But it's done. It's done real well, and there's a lot of '70s cultural stuff. You know what I mean? Like just it's just packed with sluts. Packed <laughs> with the, they're wearing bikinis and tube tops, and there's all kinds of nip slips, and they do a fake Heather nip. Uh, 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 Heather Memsey's fucking boob shot. You can tell that they edited it. Yeah, it's it, not it, her body boob. that well. <laughs> But they they try to give the audience of the time what they wanted. You know, it's 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 a Jaws ripoff. So there's always you know girls in bikinis and um and you know everybody's pretty pretty fit for the time you know uh they had some hotties fucking driving power boats and people with fucking you know skiing behind power boats and getting eaten by piranhas and good effects good practical effects yeah uh, i mean for 1978 these yeah. were pretty decent because i remember yeah. seeing this as a kid i mean i would have only been six years old when it came out so i probably didn't see it in the theater yeah um i might have seen it a couple years later like at a uh you know at a drive-in or i might have just seen it on cable i have to say that this movie because you know mm -hmm. i'm really scared of sharks and like you know underwater shit in general so this movie like scared the shit out of me too when i was yeah. a kid um this movie because i feel like oh say so jaws came out in 1975 and then after that it was just kind of like a non-stop cavalcade of kind of has been actors that used to be like really, really famous. And then they would be in all these kind of nature run of books. There's Orca, which is another one of my uh, favorite ones. It was Grizzly, um, Day of the Animals. Although that might've been before that. It was like the swarm. I think that was later, like in oh, the 80s. Uh, yeah, I remember the alligator. I remember, I, remember um, the I remember the trailers for the swarm. We got to see that one. Yeah, I haven't seen that. You know, You're bringing King, it back memories. Yeah, the Kingdom of the gone. Spiders. Yeah, there was a one. shit ton of prophecy. The one about the yeah, weird yeah. Mutant, yeah. mutant bear. I liked that one. I did too. Yeah. I like that. Like I said, I really, really like that uh, that fucking uh, genre. You know yeah. what I mean? I, 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 I'm fucking. I was kind of stunned. I think if I was, uh, you know, like I was nine or ten when I saw it. Had I seen this at twelve, I would have liked it. Yeah. I think I had not really gotten to the point where I could process what was going on. You, you know, I don't know. There was. It scared me at nine. I was like, man, this this is fucking scary. I I can't handle this. Um, but I think I had already seen Alien by then. Thank. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Well, this came out a year before Alien. Okay, so no, then I, no, I saw so, it when it came out. Yeah. Because when I saw Alien, I fucking loved it. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I just don't think my brain was uh, developed enough at the time seeing it as a kid to, to really understand what was going on. I only saw like maybe the first one quarter of it. I would have liked the whole slut angle and everything. Like, and I, and I, and I, I say slut with much love in my heart. But in, in the seventies, a slut was just a, a woman who, a young woman who owned her person, owned her own sexuality. She did, sure. what, she, she did what she wanted to do. You yeah, know? they were sexual aggressors a lot. That was that was real cool back then. You know, looking and, and there's is some of that in there, in, in here references to that to the way it was back then. It's kind of neat. Yeah, and the thing about it, I mean, they got, I had forgotten, because like I said, I don't think I saw this since I was a kid, yeah. and I had forgotten what a fucking fantastic cast they got. Yes, yeah, it's all star. So like, like I said, stars. Yeah, yeah, well, Bradford Dillman, who yeah. was in it, we just saw him in that movie Bug not yeah. too long ago, so he was the same guy. That was another now, good one. Yeah, now <laughs> he was actually, I looked up his Wikipedia page, because he was in a ton of kind of B-movies around this time period, but he started out on Broadway... And then he was in like a really lot of um, he won all kind of awards like he was in like some really well regarded movies and TV shows like back in the day. And then he sort of went into B movies later on. Um, Heather Menzies, as we mentioned, who yeah. was on the Logan's Run TV show. Yeah, she, she I think is. she was on the Captain America show as well in the late 70s. She's cute. She's cute. Yeah. Uh, Kevin McCarthy is in this, who was in the original Invasion of the Body Snatchers from 1956. Yeah. And he was in Twilight Zone, the movie. 
Keenan Wynn is fucking in this. He was Doctor yeah. Strange Love in yeah. Doctor Strange Love, and I remember him from Laser Blast because that yeah. was, that was a terrible with the That's turtle aliens. Yeah. Uh, that was on Mystery Science Bring Theater. Barbara Steele is in it. Yeah. I had forgotten Barbara Steele was in it. She's yeah. only in the end. And Dick Miller, who I think was in everything Roger Corman ever made. Yeah, uh, he's just in every fucking That's movie. The guy and he who does all the comedic relief. Right? Yeah, and he yeah. was and he was in uh, Gremlins and stuff as yeah. well. Like later on. What's funny is that movies of this era the sci-fi slash horror genre, they all had the same ending like this and like bug. Yeah. Where it just ends. Okay, done. Psh, we won. <laughs> Boom. And then they're like, don't it, think about it too much. Immediately freeze frames <laughs> and then the credits. Psh, psh, psh. You're like, wait, what the hell happened? That's how it ended? Yeah. Yeah. That's just, that's just how they did it back in the 70s sometimes. There was no wind down or a wrap up. It's yeah, just, they're just kind of like, blew up, it's right. over. <laughs> Wait a minute! It's a high impact ending. You know, that's, that's how a director back then would. Have... This movie, it's like yeah. I had forgotten. Like I said, I had forgotten how everybody in it was famous, and I also forgot how funny it was. Yeah. And it's it's funny in a good way, like in the yeah. way that Joe Dante stuff Dante stuff is it doesn't usually fuck up the tone. Yeah. yeah, it's not like wacky or no. zany or anything. It's but it's not dry either. It's just like a good like situational humor. Yeah, like there's, there's a part where fucking Heather is like she. Gives Gets, she's in she gets locked up in a jail cell with some dude and he fucks with her and he she, they're trying they have to escape the police station to go save the world and she fucking beats a dude over the head with a toilet seat wouldn't it yeah. knocks his ass out yeah and then she has to, wants to get in his clothes for some reason well no she needs to get the keys off and the keys, keys are off. chained to his pants that's right so she has to pull his fucking pants off to get the keys and fucking dudes in the other cell going you're going, going, come on. Uh, I thought you could get a man's pants off faster than that. <laughs> right. like, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. So there's a bunch, a bunch of just, sexual humor in it. Well, yeah, it was, it's just funny shit. So yeah. basically, so what happens in this, there's a, there's a short, um, you know, sequence at the beginning with your kind of obligatory, stupid, uh, teenagers kind of you know backpacking through the woods or whatever and they're like hey a no trespassing sign at a military site that we're clearly not supposed to go into let's go in here and jump into this random ass pool of water that you can't even see to the bottom of they get eaten up and of course they get yeah, eaten yeah so uh but that's what sets the plot in motion and and honestly this movie the quality of it is much much better than i remembered i remembered it being just like a super cheesy throwaway stupid yeah. i'm not saying it's like you know citizen kane or anything i thought it was going to be like on par with giant spider invasion that's how i remembered it yeah as bad as giant spider yeah, invasion. Giant but it's spider not invasion it's not it's a lot bad. tighter a lot, lot better production yeah bad. you can tell that some that people like competent people made this movie <laughs> yeah i mean it was like uh you could tell that they were trying to make something like jaws at that level yeah. you know not quite I mean, that's expensive, but I mean, this close. this cost maybe sixty thousand dollars. Six hundred thousand. Is that what it cost? Six hundred thousand. Because the special effects are pretty good. They even reused a lot of them in the fucking remake. Yeah, I kind of want to get it. The underwater shot. Well, yeah, the thing about it is like you can tell like for 1978, these uh, special effects are actually not bad. It's like, yeah, you can tell that the fish like, you know, in the wide shots, like where there's a little school of them like coming through. You can tell they're not real, obviously. Yeah. But the close up shots where they're attacking somebody. And like they just have blood in the water and it's all like it's yeah. that horrible like uh sound effect. The and then you can bite. see like all the little fish biting and yeah. like little chunks coming off. And there's a couple shots in there where you basically you see a, a piranha like bite someone's tit or their nipple yeah, yeah. or something like that. So that's he, in there. Did you see it? I go, yeah, I saw it. <laughs> like, he called it out. He got her nipple. Got it. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that would that would suck. But yeah, and then there was one too. I, I One of my favorite shots, I think the one that freaked me out when I was a kid, was the one where they show a foot and there's like three, um, you know, there, there's three piranhas like at the foot like that. And it looks real. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it really does look like somebody. Yeah. And now I remembered it being about, about just normal piranhas. Which is fucking crazy. If you know anything about piranhas, they're they're nowhere near as dangerous as people want to want to believe. No, Jeremy Wade sat in a whole yeah, pool you for a long time. Whole, and was just like, yeah, with the you can even put a fucking doing. little bit of. You can even cut yourself and put some blood in the water, and they'll take interest, but they won't go crazy. Um, but uh, no, they're not normal piranhas. They're genetic experiments. They were going to use them in Vietnam. <laughs> yeah, they were going to use them as a weapon in Vietnam somehow. Uh, 
Well, they were gonna. I, I guess gonna everybody that went minute. into the river would get eaten. get eaten up. Yeah, I don't know how they because she win a war. These, but. <laughs> these piranhas had been bled. They they weren't like bigger than regular piranhas. They were yeah, but they, they were, were intelligent. They were kind of smarter than regular yeah. piranhas, which probably isn't that hard to do. Um, they bred faster. They were more aggressive. They right, were like a hive mentality. And they could yeah. live in freshwater or salt water. Yeah, which like I said, that's not crazy. That's not an outland out, outlandish. I mean, it's it's perfectly fine for like. A, 70s you can animals att attack you can, movie. You could probably attempt it today, but like I said, that would not be a war winning weapon. It'd be a waste of time well, no. and money. Yeah. But they didn't end up using it. So it's yeah. like, so Kevin McCarthy plays the doctor that was working on it. And basically, what ended up happening is like, well, we, you know, the war ended before we perfected the shit. We didn't get to use it. So we're just keeping them for whatever reason, like up at this sort of abandoned facility. And so the two kids who go missing at the beginning of the movie, because they stupidly jump into this fucking pool yeah. <laughs> in the middle of the woods and get eaten by it, and probably rightfully so. Um, so Heather Menzies, she's a skip tracer and she gets hired to go find them, like by the girl's dad or something like that. So she tracks them to there, finds their clothes and jewelry and figures, oh, they were here and maybe they drowned in this pond. So she goes to drain the pond thereby releasing all of the piranhas into the uh, attached river system. And it's going to go downstream. There's like um, a kid's camp, summer camp at which uh, Bradford Dillman's daughter is there. And then further down, there's a new like lake resort, which is run by Dick Miller's character. So they're putting a lot of people in the way of where these piranhas are going. And fair play to this movie, it is not afraid to have a whole bunch of eight-year-olds eaten. Yeah. The which eight, I thought eight -year -olds was are fantastic. Doing, the eight-year-olds were on top. <laughs> the eight-year-olds were on top of fucking inner tubes and shit, trying to do heroic fucking things like save one another and everything with the water all frothing and churning and <laughs> blood and stuff. It was pretty good, man. Pretty good. I liked it. Maybe that's why I, maybe that's why my dad got me out of there when I was kid. I guess I might have been eight. Maybe it's because little kids were getting eaten. I don't remember exactly when we left. Yeah, because, I mean, that happens, like, been pretty late in the movie. Yeah. That's kind of like... Because the one thing that this movie does that's really good is it really kind of builds up the character and the story and everything like that before all the carnage occurs. Like, some people do get killed early, like Keenan Wynn's character... Um, he is kind of like sitting on the dock and he's kind of drinking with his dog or whatever. And the, uh, you know, the piranha come and like gnaw his, like the bottom parts of his legs off, which yeah. is actually like a really good looking effect. And he, then he bleeds to death. So it's like, that's kind of how they sort of follow the trail of the piranhas as they go down the river. Yeah. And then, you know, it, it just gets, gets ramped up and ramped up because it's like, oh, there's all these kids down there. And then farther down the river, there's even more tourists because it's kind of like a Jaws thing where it's like, no, yeah. we're going to open the shit anyway, even though, you know, they got warned about it. And so, like I said, so it's really cool that they just went for it and like had all these little kids get killed, um, you know, except for Bradford Dillman's daughter, who I think her character's name is Susie in the movie. And she's the only smart one in the summer camp. And she's just like, I don't want to go in the water. There's like stuff in there. And I'm just like, but the right you are. There is stuff in there. And that's why the only, she's the only one that didn't get fucking chewed on. That's why. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. So the funny thing about this is that what initially happened with this movie when it was going to come out in 1978, Universal Studios, um, their Jaws 2 was coming out this same summer, right? So they were trying to sue the makers of Piranha, like to keep it from coming. They were saying like copyright infringement or some bullshit like that. It's not um, that close to Jaws. Even though, though, well, and the thing about it too is that I, from what I've heard, it might have been that some of the Universal executives um, thought that Piranha might be a better movie than Jaws 2. And we're like, so we're trying to like suppress it a little bit. But Steven Spielberg went to bat for this movie because he saw it and he liked it. So he went to Universal and said, hey man, like knock it off. It's, a, you know, it's a perfectly fine movie. Is it, you know, is it a Jaws ripoff? Not really. I mean, it's, yeah. It's because kind of sci-fi angle though. Because it's fish and it's attacking, but it's, it's, but it's not like a Jaws ripoff in the same way that say like Devilfish, or that orca. Italian movie or Orca or something like yeah. that, which is more one big thing. Yeah. It's like, I, I feel like there's not really, you can't really have a copyright on, you know, oh, an X animal attacks people. You know, whatever animal attacks because it had it had a lot more of a damn sci-fi angle to it than Jaws. Yeah, because they and were monster, genetically modified, and, and it had a monster movie feel to it. 
So I, it was not like Jaws, really. Same kind of situation. You had yeah. people trying to protect civilians from these things. But, and there are a lot of beach shots, you know. Yeah. Motorboats and shit. Motorboats blowing up. There were good stunts. It's actually a good movie. A lot of good underwater shots. Guy trying to open a valve underneath the water when the damn piranhas are eating him up. You know, it just, it, it had, in some ways, better stuff or better ideas than Jaws had. Because, it, it, well, if you think kind of over the top or outlandish is better. I mean, it had a monster in it. Yeah. You know? Your little fucking tiny dinosaur and weird looking damn eels that were looking at you and I, lo cool. I loved that idea yeah. though because i didn't realize because we saw it too because we were like well what happened with the little stop motion yeah dinosaur thing or whatever and that was yeah. and the yeah and the eel that was like the thing and it it, looked so, like it was intelligent watching you yeah so yeah. when i read that it's like that he had an idea for it and he was right. like yeah it was supposed to get bigger and bigger but like no one was going to comment on it It was going to be like in the background and then you just see it like dropping yeah. and then it got bigger and i was like oh my god that would have been an awesome idea yeah be but he just couldn't element. do it he just right. couldn't do it so yeah, so I, I just kind of feel like a, another interesting thing about this movie, too, is that this is one of the few, I don't even know if I can think of another movie like this, maybe from back in the 50s, but this is kind of like one of the only nature run amok movies where they basically kill the piranhas, by or do they, by uh, intentionally polluting the river. Yeah. <laughs> basically, they just like put all the shit, they're just like, Poison. it'll just kill everything. Yeah. Although there is a hint at the end that, um, and they did make a sequel, there is a hint at the end that the uh, piranha did end up escaping to the ocean, which was what they were trying to keep from happening because they're like, because they breed so fast and, you know, they'll, oh, they'll just wipe out everything in the ocean, which I, I don't imagine they would because they're not big, but, you know. The only other thing that was kind of like this would be like cross between Jaws and Remember Food of the Gods? Yeah. Kind of like that. Very loosely based on kinda, an H.G. Wells story. Yeah, something like that. I wanted, yeah, I wanted to say too. So, like I said, you can tell that competent people made this. So, Joe yeah. Dante directed it. Um, and I think this Steven Spielberg going to bat for this movie might have been one of the things that, you know, that made the two of them friends, which, you know, kind of got Joe Dante like gremlins and stuff later on. Also, the writer on this was John Sales, for Christ's sake, who. He did Alligator too later, um, but then he did he did the first version of the script of E.T. for Christ's sake. Uh, I think he went on he did like Apollo thirteen, and so he did like really big movies like later on. So this was one of his early writing credits. Now, <laughs> last night when we were watching this movie, like I said, it's on Tubi, and I hadn't seen it since I was a kid. So we really, so we like watched that. We got some we had some beers, and we were watching this. And then we saw on Tubi that it's like, oh, they have the 1995 version as well, which I didn't even know there was one. I had heard that there yeah. was one from the from 2010, 2011. And it whatever. was shorter. Yeah, th it's funny. It's, yeah. And you can tell because we watched. So we were like, fuck it. We were kind of like half liquored up. So we were yeah. kind of like, fuck it. Let's watch the 1995 one as well. And then we can talk about that, too. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing about it is that they used pretty much the exact same script. Like a lot of the dialogue is exactly the same. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, most of the gags are the same. And they even reused all the underwater footage from the first one. Which still worked. Which still, yeah. yeah. It, it, but, you know, it was made for TV. So like I said, it's in that fucking weird aspect ratio. Yeah. But this one was also kind of... Um, kind of good. Yeah, it was also... It, it, they kind of took a lot of the humor out. You can yeah. tell... They took out some of the scenes where, like, they took out the funny shit in the original one with Bradford Dillman, like, being a drunk. Yeah. And with Keenan Wynn, like, bringing him all the liquor. And he's like, oh, I got tequila, I got bourbon, I got this, yeah. I got that. And it was, like, funny that he was a drunk, you know what I mean? Which I thought was funny anyway. He was, like, this cranky, you know, alcoholic. Um, so they took all that character development out. They took a lot of the jokes out. Um, but they tightened it up a lot. So it was a, so the 1995 one was only an hour and 20 minutes. And I think that the original was more like an hour and 32 minutes, 35 minutes, something like that. So they took like 12 to 15 minutes out of it. And if you watch them back to back, you can see exactly the scenes that they took out because the scenes are pretty much exactly in the same order and are, uh, it's almost a shot for shot remake, yeah. I have to say. And it's interesting too, because... There's a lot of really famous people in uh, the 1995 one, too. Yeah. You got in the Bradford Dillman role, you got William Catt, uh, who had been, he was in House. He was Greatest American Hero, yeah. uh, you know, back in the 80s. You got uh, Alexandra Paul, who was uh, Arnie's girlfriend in Christine. 
1983. Yeah, so you don't really, that I it, couldn't really recognize her because her hair was so much shorter. Yeah. She was still cute, though, but she yeah. just looked real kind of sleek and 90s looking. It doesn't, it, you know, she didn't have Yeah, she didn't have hair. that big, poofy, like, feathery hair, hair like she had in yeah. Uh, Christine. But yeah, she's in that. Also, a uh, very, very young, uh, what's her name? Uh, Mila Kunis, whatever her name is. Like, uh, she, she played a kid in this. Like, she played uh, the daughter, you know what yeah. I mean? Susie. And also, Soleil Moonfry, better known as Punky Brewster, was in this. She'd grown up some by this yeah. uh, time, because this was 1995. She, she played... Yeah, she played one of the uh, camp counselors, yeah. like, one of the parts that, you know, was in the first one. So, it's, like, it's really, really funny how... But it was really interesting to watch them back-to-back, -back because not only did I recognize all of the you know footage because roger corman directed or produced the second one too okay. so he was just like well why shoot all these underwater scenes again because yeah, you know because you know how budget conscious roger yeah. corman is so he's just kind of like man this is still good we'll just use that instead we'll just kind of make it match and it did actually kind of match i think that if i hadn't just watched the original you I, not. I might not have realized right. that it was the same footage again but i just thought it was weird how I mean, the dialogue was almost exactly the same. Yeah, you it's could... the same movie. It's just yeah. tighter. And and it's almost shot for shot the same, but the angle might be a little bit different. The set, wh you know, where they are, you know what I mean? The setting is, is different. It's not in the same place. Yeah. But it is the same story. Oh, yeah. yeah it's definitely. Same, same it's story. exactly the same. And it, it's just tightened up for television. And uh, it was also good. It wasn't bad. Yeah, not bad at all. It I... just, it really seems like, um, you know, if you're going to make the exact same movie, it seemed yeah. a little weird, like, I don't know. Well, I don't want to say the first, it was... the first one was forgotten by this time, probably because this is a you know the the original is a forgotten movie. Not really. It's kind of it's pretty I much about it. well yeah. And I but, saw it. I mean, it's a cult classic though. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know it was a cult classic. I never heard it. It is. Never, yeah. Never heard it mentioned. I saw it in the theater when it was nude. Forgot all about it. And like I said, they just made a 3D remake in yeah. 2010. I think yeah. it was, and that got a sequel as well. I've never even heard people mention this movie. Yeah, we saw it, I remembered it, it made a big impression on me as a kid, because like I said, you know, of people getting eaten. Yeah, well, yeah. because I grew up, you know, in Daytona Beach, I grew up like right on the Atlantic Ocean and I was at the beach all the time. So it's like I was really freaked out by, yeah. you know, sharks and plus I'm from Florida. So I'm really freaked out by alligators. We need to do the movie Alligator, too, because yeah. that movie also scared the shit out of me when I was a kid, because like I couldn't think of when I was a kid, I couldn't think of anything worse than getting eaten by a big animal. Yeah. Like, and knowing that you were getting eaten by a big animal, that's just like a horrifying concept to me. Yeah, that one scene where that guy's uh, in the first version. The first version, if you ask me, is the one you want to see. Well, yeah. It's a lot more classic. It, it's it's better. Uh, it has that it's, 70s it's, charm. Yeah. It's kind of has a little more meandering. It's a little yeah. funnier. It's funnier. It's, it's sluttier. It's, it's just, funnier, yeah, bloodier. Yeah, it, it's better. Um, Although the it's woman- It's got a better tone. The woman in the 90s one, uh the at the very beginning who jumps yeah. in the pool you know what i mean she had a much bigger rack yeah than the yeah. girl in the Big original rack. one well they that was it was implants yeah that's the, what I'm the, saying. The, the 70s girls were all now they're all natural yeah they're all natural <laughs> and then, bush and everything yeah and then <laughs> but what what i remembered about it as a kid is uh the guy's hand being stuck down the water with his kid watching him on the canoe and the fucking piranhas eating his hand the other guy, the, the guy that was so drunk he couldn't get his feet out of the water and his feet are hanging in the water and the fucking piranhas ate, ate, his, ate him from the knee down. Yeah, that was well, pretty that horrifying. Scene, that scene right there, you know, going to uh, Mississippi and fucking seeing my dad every summer, little kid, putting your feet out over, over the end of a docks or over the end of a boat into the water. I'd do it and for a few minutes and then remember that movie. Go, uh, Never mind. Yeah, put it back up. <laughs> and, but I wasn't so much afraid of, of, of piranhas doing it because I knew there weren't any piranhas there. I was afraid of an alligator gar coming up and biting me. Well, yeah. Which, or a snapping turtle yeah, or, or something snapping like turtle. that. If you guys don't know what an alligator gar is, it's a big old eel-like primitive fish. Half of it is fucking head. It's just a long head with needle-sharp fucking teeth. They're not aggressive, but... It looks like they could bite you. They look mean. They look real mean. They're not though. It's kind of like barracuda. Yeah. Like they look. Well, a barracuda can it are can be pretty mean. Okay. Well, and barracuda too will also jump into your boat. They'll jump in you. Yeah. So it, you know. <laughs> they're me in nature. They're kind of mellow and chilled out. They just catch fish, and they're not. They're not real. Uh, they're, they're not. They're actually not the kind of thing to come up and bite you. And they they don't. They're not very strong anyway. They're kind of slow. 
I wonder if anybody, I mean, there must be in this day and age when they've pretty much mined every single animal for a sci-fi original movie. But I wonder if they've made a movie about an alligator gar that's just called Gar. Well, I saw photographs in, in, in uh, Louisiana of fucking big old flat paddle boat looking things that can go through the swamp. Yeah. And they had uh, an electrified front end on them. And they were out there killing Gar. Now, yeah. this was in the early 1900s. Okay, maybe like the 20s or the 30s. And they were trying to exterminate Gar. You can Google it. Uh, and they describe a very different Gar than I knew. They said that they were huge and that they were aggressive. Now, maybe back in those days, some of those Gar might have been a, upward from 100 years old. Maybe they got very, very big when they were old. Yeah. But they're not that old anymore. You know, they don't, they don't live as long as they used to, I guess. Yeah, I think I saw some in... Well, one like river or something like that that I was swimming in, I saw some just kind of chilling out over there, and they were maybe three or four feet long. Yeah, no, they were saying that these were could get up to like nine to twelve feet long, and I've never seen one that big. No, I haven't either. And but it may have been dudes just trying to make money off of killing them because they were it was companies that were hired by the yeah. state to go out and kill these things, and uh, maybe they maybe they were just judging them on how they looked. And maybe the guys who actually went out and killed them knew that they were kind of harmless, but they weren't. They wouldn't tell the, the local, the, you know, the local governments that, that they were harmless. So they, the, the the cash would stop flowing. Well, yeah. They weren't. They're not any good to eat. No. No, it's a garbage fish. Yeah. But yeah, that's so. That's the thing. So yeah. so like I said, I kind of feel like this movie. I'm just really really glad I got to watch it again because I remembered. I remembered it scaring me when I was little. But I also remembered it being kind of like a shitty throwaway, super cheap movie. And it was a super cheap movie, but it doesn't really look like it. No. I mean, the writing is actually really good. It's actually like pretty funny, but all the actors are totally are really good in it. It's got a really good cast. Um, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's just like, like an early Spielberg movie. Yeah, though. it's like actually much, much better than I remembered yeah. it being. And the piranha effects for this being such a low budget movie and it being the late 70s are actually pretty effective, I thought. I forgot about the sci fi angle. Yeah, like it, the of, genetic. Yeah, and that it being a military weapon. And, yeah. And I, I kind of chuckle at that. Although. Yeah, but it makes sense, makes though. Sense. There's only one military weapon that, based on animals, that ever fucking had any promise for success, and you guys can look it up. It was called the Bat Bomb. The Bat, I was going to say. The Bat Bomb. The Bat <laughs> Bomb worked. It was a bomb you dropped, and on its way down, it opened up and on a parachute, and in there, on these little racks, were these hibernating bats. They had been kind of, you make them real cold with dry ice. Hibernating bats, and they wake up on their way down. Then they fly out. When they fly away, it pulls a little rip cord on them, and on their chest was staple with a medical staple bag of damn uh about a 50 50 mixture of gasoline and dish soap to like napalm and they would go into little japanese buildings and there's a little chemical timer on it and then they would catch on fire burning poor the little, bat poor little burning, bats and burning up all the buildings because they would That's get not up cool they would get up in the nooks and crannies in japanese wooden wooden houses that was the idea they made a whole damn target japanese city to town to test them on when they tested it would it would have worked but it you got to raise a shit ton of bats though and then you got to keep them fucking at low temperature and you got to feed them it, it's not plausible speaking of cruelty to animals yeah. um that was another that was another one of the major differences between the 1978 original and the 1995 remake the 1978 original like keenan Wynn is sitting there with his dog and he gets his legs chewed off and he bleeds to death uh, but the dog is okay, I think. The dog doesn't get killed, right? I don't think the dog gets killed. Yeah. In the 1995 one, the dog absolutely yeah, the gets dog killed. Gets the dog, like, jumps in the water trying to save yeah. its master. And, uh, yeah, so it doesn't do it. It doesn't right. do it. So also, I think it's a golden retriever in the remake. Yeah. And in the uh, original, I don't know what kind of dog that is. It was just some kind of mutt dog. But yeah, so so that was like the one thing I was like, oh, fuck you, 95 movie. Why do you leave the dog alone? You can eat all the children you want, for fuck's sake. But leave yeah. that poor puppy alone. But yeah, so that was one thing that I wanted to mention because that was kind of one difference. But yeah, both uh, the 1978 version and the 1995 version are both on Tubi for free if you want to watch them. I still need to see the 2010 
uh, Piranha 3D because I heard that was fucking crazy and like super over the top gory and shit I like wish, that. Yeah. And like I said, Piranha 3 Double D. I'm sure you will enjoy that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all just like wa- <laughs> like water. But I saw some like yeah, clips yeah. from it. It looks hysterical. More and more out of more and more ridiculous. Yeah, it's just supposed to be like outlandish, like tits well, and you, blood and gore and you shit got like the that. Piranha and yeah. 3D, right? Is it 3D too? Yeah. And then put some double Ds in it. Yeah, yeah, it's coming right after. All right, how how is that gonna lose? And and like I said, uh, you know, having a scene where a piranha spits a dude's severed dick at you. Yeah, I mean, how can that not be? Gotta awesome? see we can watch him tonight. I guess. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. All right, <laughs> all right, but yeah, check them both out. They're on Tubi. Just fun seventies animals attack movies. Yeah, Jaws ripoff, but it's good in its own right. So yeah, that'll do it for this movie retrospective, and we will see you guys on the next one. Hmm. Bye.